So what I've done here is I've gone ahead and opened up an image of the beach and you can see that um, the beach is just stretching out there. There's a lot of sand and then you can see the ocean out here in the clouds. So it's just a good kind of broad environment shot of, um, of a setting. And I've opened this and then I'm going to place another image on top. Now we haven't placed yet in our class. Um, we've only opened and created new documents. But if you want to put an image onto an existing document, place is always the option that you're going to use. And you can place an image by going to File and selecting Place. So I'm going to do that. Now I've found a picture of the Mona Lisa. So I'm going to go ahead and grab that. You will not see this menu. You should see something like this. Now, what you want to do before you do anything else is just go ahead and hit return. Notice that since I've opened up my background, or since I've opened up this beach image, that is my background layer. Then the Mona Lisa image is the layer that's above because I've placed that on top of this background. So now we do have the Mona Lisa on the beach, but we can't really see, it doesn't really look like she's actually on the beach. So what we need to do to make sure that she's on the beach is we need to select her. Now another thing you may want to do before you even select her is you may want to resize her. And you can do this before or after the masking, but it's really important that when you resize your image that's on top here, you want to make sure you have the show transform controls checked at the top and that you always use the corner to pull and you always, always, always hold down the shift key so that you don't lose proportion. So you can click to do this, size it down and size it up. Once you get it the way you like it, go ahead and hit return. Now it's really important for this next step that you make sure that you are selected in the actual layer that you will, that you will be selecting. So here we're in Mona and we will be selecting in that layer. So I'm gonna go over to my tools here and I have a bunch of selection tools up on the top but the selection tool that I'm going to use today is called the Quick Selection Tool, and this is one of the easiest selection tools to use, hence the name Quick Selection. So it looks like a little paintbrush with a dotted circle around it. So if you choose that, you'll notice that your option menu up at the top gives you the option of different brush sizes. It also has this option of plus or minus. You want to make sure that you're checked in the plus here. So if you have what I, what I have on my options, then you're okay. You're going to hover over your image. You can zoom in if you want, Command plus. And you're going to click inside. You're not going to click around the edge. You're clicking inside of the part you want to select. And you're just click, click, clicking. Don't click, don't continuously click or um, hold down the cursor because that will ex sometimes expand your selection beyond where you want. Speaking of that, notice how my selection just kind of went and selected the background here too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold down the Option key and when I do that you can see my plus changes from a plus to a minus. So now I can go ahead and click in the background and deselect some of that background information that I selected. All right. And sometimes that is an easier way of selecting, is to kind of select these bigger areas and then deselect parts of this. Right. So again, to get the minus on this tool you hold down the option key and there we go now she's sitting in a chair so I'm actually going to move her when I get her cut out here and I'll show you uh, what I mean by that here in just a second but this looks like a pretty good selection now you see I didn't get her finger right here so I'm gonna go ahead and click that one other thing that you can do is you can click up here on refine edge before we start masking and that'll show you what you actually have selected here. And if you have any wispy areas, like through the hair, you can use this little cursor in the Refine Edge menu. If we zoom in, you can kind of run that along the edges of the hair. 
and that will help you to refine little wispy parts. You don't want to use this everywhere, but if you have kind of not very definitive areas like hair or really um, kind of wispy, fabricy areas, you can try it there. Once you're happy with that, you can go ahead and hit OK, and you can see how that selection just kind of pulled in there along the hair. Now that we've done that, we need to add a mask, and that's pretty simple to do. You're going to look over here in your layers panel because this is a layers mask that we're adding. And you're going to click the button down here that's the third button in. Looks like a rectangle with a circle, and that's our layer mask button. We'll hit that, and notice now we have our image, and linked to our image, we have this mask. The mask that you can see here is black where we've hidden, so it's hiding all of this information in the image, and then it's white where it's showing the image. So actually, it's kind of funny because it looks like she's buried in the sand um, a little bit there. So I'm going to kind of move her to make that look a little bit more so. And maybe later on I'll put like a pail and a bucket or a, a bucket and a shovel there to make it really look like she's been uh, buried in the sand. Um, so once you have your person in your setting, you want to think about the best way to make them look like they're actually there. Sometimes that means kind of putting them off of the side or off of the bottom here so it looks like you can't see the rest of their body. Um, for this, I could kind of make it look like she's just, you know, buried waist deep in the sand, like I said. Um, you can also look and see if your selection makes sense and if it's still looking okay. Now, one thing that I noticed as I was selecting before, if you look very closely, you can see that I accidentally selected a little bit of the background right through here. I think that's right where those mountains were. So you can see a little bit of that still in my mask. I can correct that fairly simply by doing something called painting the mask. I want you to notice over here in my layer, I can click into the image part of that layer, or I can click into the mask. I want to click into the mask for this next part that, I, that I'll be doing. So while I'm clicked in that mask, notice that my colors over here, my foreground color and background color, they change from uh, colors to black and white. I'm going to go into my paintbrush, and remember when I told you that black hides and white shows, so currently my foreground color is set to black, so that's the color I'm currently using. So I'm going to take that color, and while I'm clicked into this uh, thumbnail of the mask, I'm going to paint so I completely erase that wispy line that I didn't quite select. Now you can go back and you can help sharpen up the edges here too by going in and painting the mask. You could even, if you wanted to take parts out, you could do that. Remember, if you don't like what you did or if you make a mistake, command option Z to walk that back. But that's pretty much it. Now, a couple people have asked the question, why do you mask instead of just erasing the background? The reason why we would use a mask instead of erasing the background is because if I change my mind about something later, or if I want to go and get some information, or maybe I didn't make the best selection, but I didn't catch that until later, I cut off a finger or something, I still have all of that information in this layer. It hasn't been erased. If you erase it, it's gone for good. But if you just mask it, then you still have all of that information right there. It also allows you to create a somewhat softer edge because you could go back and paint, uh, paint that mask with a lower opacity. So again, if I wanted to go in, zoom in and show you here, if I wanted to go in and paint that black through here with a lower opacity, you can see I'm just painting a little bit of that out. So there are many different options and many different things that you can do with uh, masking. Uh, so play around with this. Try a couple different images and try to create a little scene that would be uh, something fun. This is one of the most playful tools in Photoshop, so you should have a good time just playing around. All right, enjoy.